down. Sweet and soft. Joe, you drive too fast. Well, I'm just trying to bring a little excitement into your life, I think. Taking care of your pawn brothers made you too serious. Do you think breaking my neck driving with you will cure that? No, but I think I can think of another cure for you. I wonder where Dad and Jimmy are. Dad and Jimmy? Carolyn, don't, don't you have any romance in your soul? They really should have been back by now. Yeah, well, I... don't worry about them. You know, it takes a little time to look at a thousand acres of land. You should have gone up, too. Jimmy went with them. Well, Jimmy's a good son, and I'm no good. I'm kind of shiftless and irresponsible. I think you know what I mean. Are you looking for somebody, stranger? Yeah, a man called Partridge. You know him? Lem Partridge is my father. Is he here? Oh, you got some business with him? Yeah, kind of. Him and me's old friends. He's not here now. He's up in the hills surveying a piece of land with Mr. Cartwright. You can wait for him. Yeah, well, I'll catch up with him later. You just tell your daddy an old friend from Tucson dropped by. Tell him Jack Grote said... said hello. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, tell me what's the matter. The man outside, you knew him, didn't you? No, no, I didn't know him. My father did. Who is he? Jack Grote from Tucson. It's my mother. No, my father said once of it. Hadn't been for Jack Grote, my mother'd be alive today. Young couple supposed to be enjoying themselves. You're both looking mighty serious. Oh, that's really fine land up there, little Joe. This time tomorrow, your father and I are going to own it. How about stand for supper? Try some of Carolyn's cooking. Dad, there was a man looking for you. Oh, what man? Jack Grote from Tucson. Jack Grote. Dad, isn't that the man that? Yes, that was the man. He said he'd be around for a while and he'd see you. I guess I always expected he would. Well, Dad, what are you going to do? Do? What's it to do? We've got to do something. Don't worry about it, son. I'll handle it. Mr. Partridge, I... I know it's none of my business, but... Is it true what Carolyn said, that this... this man Grote was responsible for the death of your wife? Yes, little Joe, it's true. Happened about ten years ago in Tucson. One sunny, peaceful day. Their mother had gone out shopping, trying to find a bowl of cloth to make a dress for Carolyn. There were two men, both ugly drunks, started shooting up the street, trying to kill one another. When she came out of that shop, one of their bullets hit her. A dozen men standing by, just watching. When I got there, she was dead. And one of these two men was Grote. I was sheriff of Tucson at the time and was sworn to uphold the law. So the only thing I could do was to send them both to prison, which I did. 
But I made a sad mistake that day. I should have killed them in the street like a pair of mad dogs. Instead, I arrested them and gave them a fair trial. I tried to convince myself that I had done the right thing. But that's mighty small comfort when you're burying your wife. Well, Dad, what are you going to do now? I guess I'll just have to wait to see what he means to do, son. Now, stop worrying. I've handled plenty of men like Jack Grubb. Let's have some supper, honey. You'll stay, won't you, Joseph? I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Partridge. I wish I could, but I, I better be getting back to the ranch. Well, you tell your father I'll meet him at 9 o'clock in the morning at the land office, all right? Yes, sir. Good day, Carolyn. Jimmy? Uh, Carolyn. the same story some time ago. What do you think this fellow Grote intends to do? Do? Now, when you've been sitting in jail for that long a time, stewing inside and building up a poison against the man who put you there, you might do anything. You'd think it would be Partridge. You'd have all the hatred. Uh, well, I guess when, when his wife was killed, Lem kind of sickened on his job. You know, he never even taught his boy how to handle a gun. Seems all the things he's been running from these years are about to catch up with him, don't it? Pa, why don't you go to the sheriff? Well, Lem Partridge is a grown man. I'm having a meeting with Lem and Wade Cowley about that land deal in the morning. I might try to persuade him to go see Roy. Oh, you right in with me? Sure, Paul. How long is it going to be, Paul? Oh, just as long as it takes for Lem and me to haggle with Wade Cowley over the price and then sign our names. You load up the buckboard and, uh, oh, don't forget, make sure that the side meat is... I just... know, I know, the side meat's nice and lean. <laughs> All right. I'll meet you back at the store as soon as we're finished. Right. Oh, Wade. Oh, Ben. Jimmy. Where's your father? Carolyn and I talked him into going to see Sheriff Coffey. Good, good. Oh, Wade, I, uh... Hope you haven't changed your mind about selling that land. I'm no rancher, Ben. I'm far more comfortable operating out of an office here in town. There are days when I wouldn't mind changing places with you. I see you got the deed already. Hey, you didn't put the price down, did you? We still got some dealing to do, you know. No, I'm just waiting for Lem Partridge. Well, you'll sell your land, don't you worry now. Well, I'm not worried, Ben. I... Oh, here he is now. Uh. <laughs> You looking for someone, mister? Well, I was told I'd find a man named Len Partridge. My name's Partridge. Well, you ain't the Partridge I'm looking for, sonny. You want my father. Oh, yeah, well, I guess old Len would have a boy about your age now. I guess he would. Who are you, mister? What do you want? Oh, I just want to say hello to an old friend from Tucson. You're Jack Grote. Well, now, sure does make a man feel at home to have folks know his name. What do you want with my father? Easy, Jimmy, easy. Ben, be careful. Yeah, be careful. This ain't none of your business. This is strictly between me and Partridge. The boy asked what you wanted. Yeah, he did, didn't he? His daddy should have taught him better manners. You shouldn't be so nosy, boy. He's going to kill him. He swore he would, because Dad sent him to prison. I've been waiting 10 long years in Yuma prison for this day. And when Lem Partridge walks through that door, I'm gonna put a bullet right in the middle of his belly. And there ain't none of you that's gonna raise even a little finger to stop me. Not even you, boy. Suppose you just ease that gun out real slow. 
Uh-uh. Over there on the table. Now look, Rote. All this happened such a long time ago. Why bring it up now? Don't forget, last time you were lucky. You got away with a few years in prison. This time it'll be the rope. So why don't you just ride quietly out of town and forget the whole thing? Last time was an accident. This time I know what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be a fair fight. He's gonna draw, and I'm gonna draw. And I'm gonna walk right out of here. Then I guess there isn't gonna be any fight. Partridge hasn't worn a gun in ten years. Partridge knows I'm in town. He'll be carrying a gun. He's unarmed. You shoot an unarmed man, you won't get 50 yards from that door. If I know Partridge, and I do, he'll be armed. Over there. You too. Come on, move! Sit down, boy. What do you do? Kill Jimmy Partridge. I should have killed him. Take him to the sheriff's office. I gotta tell them. Sheriff, I think I'm gonna be very comfortable here. It's better than I'm used to. Yeah, it's a real nice little jail. Inside. I got Lem Partridge, did I? But I got his boy. Now let Partridge suffer like I done for 10 years in Yuma. You're gonna hang, mister. Oh, I don't think so. No, that boy went for a gun. That makes a fair fight out of it, and I got two witnesses to prove it. You got a couple of witnesses that heard you say you was out to get Lem Partridge, too, Buster. Big boy, they don't hang a man in this territory for what he meant to do. Got a real dandy there, Roy. See. That boy never touched a gun in his whole life. I never let him. You all knew that. Lem, there was nothing we could do. Nothing you could do. I tried to stop him. What was that for? The man's son is dead. I know that. Is he trying to call us cowards? No. It wasn't anything like that. I guess what he was saying was that if one of us had taken the risk of trying to stop Groat, we'd have stood a better chance. Sure, a chance to get our heads blown off. I don't want to be a dead hero. Where's he going? I don't know, Paul. Just turn and walked away. Howdy, Lamb. I'm. All right, Roy, where is he? Lamb, this is foolish. You're just asking for trouble. Open it up. Why don't you? I said open it up. All right. Hurry it up. This is the way you fight, huh? When you're the only one who's got the gun? I should 
have killed you ten years ago. Well, I'm not going to repeat that mistake this time. Hold it, Len. Let go. Let. Haven't you done enough already? If you kill him like this, you'll be no better than he is. Now, come on, let go. Go on home, Lem. Let go. And him? If you stand trial, you know that. That's right, Partridge. I'll stand trial. You know that. Lem! Give me a chance, man. A chance, that's all I ask. A fair fight. Now, we can't do that. Lem, you're forgetting you was a sheriff one. Now go on home and settle down. Just stood there and let my boy die, and now you're protecting him. If it was one of your own sons, Ben, you'd have done something. But you didn't. You're guilty. Both you and Wade, just the same as if you'd pulled that trigger. Old Lem didn't mean what he was saying. As soon as he simmers down, give him his gun back, huh? Come on, Paul, let's go home. Paul. a good boy. Never did any harm. Eighteen years old. Boy, he never even had a chance. Respects. A little late for respects, isn't it? Dad. Now, you're a big man around here, Ben Cartwright. But from now on to me, you're a small man. Small man. Who stood by and let my son die. It's not Mr. Cartwright's fault that Jimmy's dead. A man that stands by and lets evil happen. He's as guilty as the one who does the evil. You can't salve your conscience shedding tears at this boy's grave, Ben. Because you're not wanted here. Lem, I'm your friend. Not anymore. You stop being my friend when you let my boy go for that gun. for quite a long time. He was like an uncle to Jimmy. Yeah, but he's acting like it was it was his fault that the boy got killed. I don't get it. Well, he's upset about what Mr. Partridge said. He must know he wasn't responsible. Well, not for what he did. He's thinking about what he might have done. Yeah. Looks like there's something we could do or say or something. Maybe there is. Maybe we can prove that he couldn't have stopped him. We've been talking, and uh, I got an idea. 
And him talking isn't going to help anything. Now, don't you realize there wasn't anything you could do about it? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't think I'll ever know. Well, there's a way to find out. What do you mean? I think I know how to take the doubt out of your mind. Now, wait. Hello, Ben. Little Joe, Adam. What can I do for you? Well, it may seem a little strange to you, Mr. Cowley, but uh, we want to go over what happened yesterday. We'd like to go through it the way it actually happened. Well, With empty guns, of course. And where were you standing, Carl? Over there by the corner of the desk. Joe, get over there. And where was your gun? That table, just on the side of it. Joe? Where were you, Mr. Cowley? Well, I was over there by Ben. What's the sense of all this? Well, you'll, you'll understand in just a minute. Now, where was Jimmy? He's sitting in that chair. And, uh, Groat? Groat was right here by the window. Look, Adam, I don't, I don't like this. Oh, it's the only way now. Uh, what actually happened now? Well, Groat stepped up to the window where you are, had his gun in his hand, and, and uh, he just moved over to the window because he heard someone coming. I guess he thought it was Lem. Mm -hmm. And he began to pull down that shade. That's when it happened. Jimmy went for my gun. All right, let's see what happens. You see, Pa, you wouldn't have made it. Maybe Groat wouldn't have been as quick as you. And you wouldn't have been as quick as me, Pa. I don't know. I'll never know for sure. I didn't go for that gun before Jimmy. Pa, that's not the point. We just showed you if you went for the gun first, you would have been killed. You didn't have a chance. You don't understand. You weren't in my shoes. Well, what more proof do you need? Thank you. Joe, look, you, you're going back home. Something I've got to do. Bye, right, wait. Is your father here, Carolyn? No, he isn't. Oh, where is he? I don't know, Mr. Cartwright. I don't know. What's the matter, Carolyn? It's my father. I've never seen him like this before, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> oh, Carolyn. Come on now, pull yourself together. Tell me what's wrong. After the funeral yesterday, my father rode away and he didn't come back until dark. He wouldn't eat any supper. He sent me to bed. But I could hear him pacing all night long. All night? Yes. I dozed off and on, but I could still hear it. And early this morning, I couldn't stand it anymore, so... I walked into the room and found him cleaning a rifle. Sorry to be such a baby. Oh, Carolyn, you've had a terrible few days. Did your father say anything to you? No, he didn't. He just... When I saw him with a gun, I... I just rushed over and tried to take it from him. He pushed me away. Mr. Cartwright, that's the first time my father's ever touched me in anger. Oh, dear. You know, men sometimes say things or do things in anger which they really don't mean. Well, he didn't even look like my father. He just glared at me and turned and left the house. I heard him ride away on his horse. 
When was this? This was a couple of hours ago. I, I'd better be going now. Mr. Cartwright, please tell me something. I, I don't understand. When, when my mother died, my father put up his guns. And now when my brother dies, he puts them back on. Carolyn, sometimes when, a, when grief piles up on a man, his thinking gets blurred in spite of himself. But why does he have to kill Groat? Oh, no one's going to kill Groat. Groat's in jail. Now, Sheriff Coffey and I, your father's friends, so don't worry about anything. Oh, thank you. Have you eaten today? You better fix yourself something. Roy, the man left his place with a loaded rifle. In his frame of mind, is capable of doing anything. That's right. You reckon he's coming here? Well, I don't know where else he'd go. There's the man he wants. But you ain't gonna let him take me, are you, Mr. Cartwright? No, sir. Because you know your duty as a citizen, don't you, Mr. Cartwright? And you too, Sheriff. You can't let that man come in here and kill an unarmed prisoner now, can you? Hmm? Oh, look at that big man. Yes, sir, ain't he a big man with a gun hanging from his belt? But you wasn't so big yesterday, was you, Mr. Cartwright? <laughs> Better find the partridge, Roy. Try to talk some sense into him. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. You can't take off and leave me alone here. He'll kill me. You're right, Ben. We can't go off and leave him alone. My deputy's taking a prisoner down to Carson. You mind spelling me off while I have a look around and see if I can find Lem? All right. If you do find him, go easy on him, will you? Yeah. Sure does give a man a good feeling, though he's being guarded by the chief witness for the defense. Well, let me tell you something, Grote. When I testify at the trial, it'll be against you, not for you. Well, you've got to tell the truth, don't you? I mean, a big, upstanding citizen like you ain't gonna lie. How is he? You'll hang, Grote. One way or another, you'll hang. What do you mean? Put up that rifle, then. Now, you step aside, Cartwright, because I'd just as soon kill you, too. Now, look, Lem, I can't let you do this. All right. You got a gun? Try and stop me. Now, I'm gonna count. And when I get to three, you better be out of the way or go for your gun. One. Don't be a fool, Lem. Two. Use your head. Three. To jail. Now, the next time it's going to be for keeps. You better shoot for keeps. He tried to kill us. He tried to kill both of us. Benny, you all right? I'm all right. Yeah, it's only a flesh wound. Ben, he meant to kill you. He could have killed me, and he didn't. Even though he thinks you and I are guilty? Maybe we are guilty. How could we be guilty? Guilty of what? I'm guilty of what we did yesterday or didn't do in the land office. It's only human. Are you saying we're guilty of being human? Ben, you all right? Yeah, I live. Where's Lamb? Well, he got away. This is pretty serious. You know, it's one thing to want revenge on the man who killed your own son, but it's another to go around with a gun just shooting at people. What are you going to do? I'm going out and get a posse together and send them out to look for him. I don't reckon he'll be home after this. Roy, that Partridge is an old friend of mine. 
Don't hurt him. Let me go look for him, would you? Ben, you just do whatever you want, but I got a job to do. Now, he's wounded one man and tried to kill another one. I got to bring him in just any way I can. Has your father been here? No, Mr. Cartwright. Oh. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. You fellas want me to whip up a batch of eggs? It's way past supper time. No, I'm not hungry. They still say we ought to be out looking for Pa. No, we've been all through that. It's not going to do any good for all of us to go running around the landscape. Pa wants us. He'll come for us here at the ranch. Well, it's just not like Pa to go this long without sending word. Well, ain't no use in sitting around worrying about it. We might as well eat. How do you want your eggs? I said I'm not hungry. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm going to look for Pa. Well, now, wait. There's no sense in all of us going out looking for him. Well, I'll stay here just in case. Why don't you check all the ranches west of here and see if anybody's seen him. I'll ride into town and see if I can find him. I don't look so worried. Eat some of your eggs and it'll take your mind off your troubles. Stop that paperwork and put some wood in the stove. I'm freezing. By the time I get this paperwork finished, you're going to be on your way to a place where you're never going to get cold again. Oh, you and Cartwright, if you ain't a pair of big men in a small puddle. Well, you listen, old man. I'm going to have myself a trial, and then I'm going to walk out of here free. You think so? Yes, I think so. That boy was shot to self-defense, and you know it as well as I do. Well, let me just tell you something about this small puddle. The folks that live here are the folks that are going to try you. And every one of them knows that Jimmy Partridge never handled a gun in all his life. And the witnesses are going to say that you threatened to kill Lem Partridge. They say Jimmy went for you, all right, but to protect his paw. And you shot him. In self-defense, in self-defense, you old goat. He dove for the gun. Now, how are you going to convince a jury of that? He never reached the gun, did he? He dove for it. And I got two witnesses, very highly thought of in this small puddle, that are going to testify to that. Uh, you talk too much. All right? All right. Why would the boy try to reach me when he knew I was going to gun him down, huh? Why? Yeah. Because he loved his paw enough to take that chance. And all the people in this small puddle are going to know that, too. More beautiful words from the big man. Well, it don't mean nothing. You just stand back over there and I'll give you a hot grub. Hi, look, Sheriff. I told you I was freezing. You're such fine, upstanding people in this town. Is this how you treat your prisoners? You freeze them to death? Oh, all right. Here. Wrap yourself up in that and shut up. I ain't gonna wrap myself up in this thing. It's crawling with bugs. What are you talking about? That blanket was just washed. All right, look, it's crawling. You can't show me a bug on this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks for the lecture, big man. Everybody's a big man. What kind of a blasted sheriff are you, anyway? How could you do a stupid thing like that? I'm asking you, what kind of a sheriff are you? Well, right now, I'm a pretty sick one, and that infernal talking of yours ain't helping me out one little bit. Oh, my head. Oh, the devil take your head. What about my life? You and your, your papers, and your talk about witnesses. Oh, calm down, will you? I was only doing my job. I just can't understand it. I was sitting in my office, minding my own business, and now, just a day later, a man is all fired up to kill me. Oh, wait, nobody's going to kill you. Is that so? Well, that's what you think, Ben Cart, right? Do you know what happened? Do you know what our smart sheriff did? Oh, Roy, I, I couldn't find them. Was the posse able? What's wrong? What happened to you? That's what I'm trying to tell you, Ben. This idiot let Grote escape. Oh, no, Roy. He's right, Ben. I'm a stupid idiot. I let that groat maneuver me into a position where he hit me over my head with my own gun. After all the years I've had of handling assorted criminals. Oh, that's not the important thing right now, Roy. Groat's free and Partridge is running around those hills with a rifle. And there's going to be shooting that could be killing. Never mind about them. We've got to think about ourselves now. They're not the only ones who could be killed. Others could be killed, too, like you and me. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what. He knows we would be witnesses against him. Now he'll want to kill us. Oh, nonsense, Wade. Nonsense? Yes, nonsense. Groat's not going to bother with us. Why not? He's a killer. We're the only witnesses. That's exactly the point. He needs us alive. He's after the man who he came to kill in the first place. And that's Lem Partridge. Yeah, that's Lem Partridge. The first place he'd look for him would be Lem's place. Carolyn is there, alone. Yeah, Ben, we gotta get out there. Oh, Roy, you're in no condition to go anywhere. You get yourself to a doctor. Wait, you come with me. Walk in between two men are gunning for each other, not me. About you, and I went in town to look for you. Did the uh, sheriff tell you about Grote? Yeah. He told me you were headed this way. Did you see anybody on the way up? No, not so. It seems quiet enough around here. Check the barn. There, but Partridge's horses. Yeah. Well, Carolyn seems to be all right. Looks like your fears about growth were a little unnecessary. Who is it? It's me. It's Ben Cartwright, Carolyn. Are you all right, dear? Yeah, yes. What's the matter? Nothing. My father's not here right now, Mr. Cartwright. Wait here. troubling you, Carolyn. I'm troubling her, big man. And I'll just trouble you to slip that gun out, put it on the table. You too. Dad, he's going to kill him. 
Say, she's as smart as her brother, ain't she? And prettier. That's right. You already killed a man's son. How much more blood do you want? Just his. And I'm gonna spill some of it as soon as he comes through that door. I might just as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. Oh, I might... I might let him crawl a little bit first, so as I can see the look in his eye. Yeah, I think I'll let him beg a little bit. How do you know he'll be back tonight? Mister, I got all the time in the world. Back in the corner. All the way. Go on. for you. I should have figured Coffee's jail wouldn't hold you. There ain't no jail gonna hold me until I settle with you final. Get over by the fireplace. Away from the gun. I don't want this to go too fast. Not after waiting all this time. I want to taste it a little. Come over here, sister. If this ain't the most stubborn family. You know, you're gonna bruise just as easy as your brother, honey. Lucy says, Carolyn. Ain't this interesting? Now, this is really getting interesting, ain't it? Just like yesterday, when you walked into the land office, huh? Yeah, just like yesterday. Who are you, and what do you know about it? He's my son, I told him. Oh, your father, the big man here. Well, did the big man also tell you how he sat tight? You know, since I've been to this, this lovely little town, it, it's kind of got to me. Yeah, it, it's made me want to be a solid citizen, too, like the big man there. Well, just how big a man does it take to shoot a boy in the back? You don't bother me, Sonny. That was self-defense. Your daddy knows that. If you were there, Pa, would you call it uh, self-defense? Well, I don't know. I always figured that self-defense was facing a man, not a boy's back. Suppose we let old Partridge here have an even chance. Suppose we let him go for a gun, huh? Even chance, huh? Just like he gave the kid. You don't even know what the words mean. You got a big mouth on you, boy, like your pa. You got some ideas of being a big man, too? Well, I don't know. What do you think, pa? You, are we as big as solid citizen there? Well, maybe if the tables were turned, he wouldn't be talking so tough. Well, you try me. Come on, try me. Well, talk is easy, ain't it? Now, you two listen to me. This is the way it's gonna be. You open your mouths again, and this little girl is gonna get it. You filthy, murdering animal. Ten years in a prison will make an animal out of any man. You'd shoot her in the back just like Jimmy, wouldn't you? You know it, Cartwright. You was there. I understand, Ben. I didn't realize how it was yesterday, but I do now. Shut up, Partridge! Make your move! Groat, you've already killed his wife and son. It wasn't my bullet that killed his wife! Yeah, I was a little drunk, but it was an accident. And I never would have gone to prison if it hadn't been the sheriff's wife. 
If she hadn't been the sheriff's wife, you wouldn't be alive today. You got off lucky. Lucky, yes. Ten years lucky? Well, let's just try your luck. <laughs> Hold it. All right. What are you waiting for? Go on and kill me! Madam, ride into town and get the sheriff. Good man, Lamb. Good man. Hey, Ben, I thought that wild young son of yours was supposed to take my daughter riding this afternoon. Yeah, I guess he is. Yeah, morning, Wade. Morning, Ben. Here are the deeds for that land. And at the right price, Lamb. Yeah. Here they are made out right and proper. Thank you. Well, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Man has a lot to be thankful for. A lot to mourn, maybe, but a lot to be thankful for. Not the least of which is a good friend. Thank you, Lem. Take it right out and have a look at your new land. Oh, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, Wade. Not at all, Lim. Ben, do you still think we were guilty of anything? Well, as you said, Wade, perhaps of being human. Oh, and Carolyn, don't keep my son out too late. He'd be around for a while and he'd see you. I guess I always expected he would. Well, Dad, what are you gonna do? Do? What's it to do? We've got to do something. Don't worry about it, son. I'll handle it. Mr. Partridge, I... I know it's none of my business, but... Is it true what Carolyn said, that this... this man Grote was responsible for the death of your wife? Yes, little Joe, it's true. Happened about ten years ago in Tucson. One sunny, peaceful day. Their mother had gone out shopping, trying to find a bowl of cloth to make a dress for Carolyn. There were two men, both ugly drunk, started shooting up the street, trying to kill one another. When she came out of that shop, one of their bullets hit her. A dozen men standing by, just watching. When I got there, she was dead. And one of these two men was Grote. I was sheriff of Tucson at the time and was sworn to uphold the laws. I think you know what I mean. Are you looking for somebody, stranger? Yeah, a man called Partridge. You know him? Lem Partridge is my father. Is he here? So you got some business with him? Yeah, kinda. Him and me's old friends. He's not here now. He's up in the hills surveying a piece of land with Mr. Cartwright. You can wait for him. Yeah, well, I'll catch up with him later. You just tell your daddy an old friend from Tucson dropped by. Tell him Jack Grote said... said hello. <laughs>
what's the matter? Now tell me what's the matter. The man outside, you knew him, didn't you? No, no, I didn't know him. My father did. Who is he? Jack Grote from Tucson. It's my mother. My father said once, if it hadn't been for Jack Grote, my mother'd be alive today. Young couple supposed to be enjoying themselves. You're both looking mighty serious. Oh, that's really fine land up there, little Joe. This time tomorrow, your father and I are gonna own it. How about stand for supper? Try some of Carolyn's cooking. Dad, there was a man looking for you. Oh, what man? Jack Grote from Tucson. Jack Grote. Dad, isn't that the man that... Yes, that was the man. Too fast. Oh, I'm just trying to bring a little excitement into your life, I think. Taking care of your pawn brothers made you too serious. Do you think breaking my neck driving with you will cure that? No, but I think I can think of another cure for you. I wonder where Dad and Jimmy are. Dad and Jimmy? Carolyn, don't, don't you have any romance in your soul? They really should have been back by now. Yeah, well, I... don't worry about them. You know, it takes a little time to look at a thousand acres of land. You should have gone up, too. Jimmy went with them. Well, Jimmy's a good son, and I'm no good. Kind of shiftless and there's 